Okay, so I quickly wanted to show you a workflow of how you take something that's been built in pixels and essentially redesign it in CSS. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, I'm going to be showing you a non-typical one, um, and that's using Edge Animate, Adobe Edge Animate. And this is actually um, a really robust um, CSS animation tool, but it also has some great CSS design features, which I'll show you. So I just went out onto Dribbble and downloaded this dark UI kit because this is oftentimes what will happen. You'll find some cool looking button or, or component and you want to essentially convert that into CSS. So if we look in Photoshop, I've essentially isolated just the um, three button states here. And we have the regular button state, the hover, and then the down or the active state. And if we look, these are actually um, just regular shape layers. Well, you might have noticed that I'm actually using Photoshop CC, um, which is due to come out in a couple of weeks. And this has a great new feature that allows you to quickly export CSS directly from Photoshop. So if I right click on this layer, you can see we now have this copy CSS um, menu item. If I do that, it's now taken the layer style and converted it into CSS. So let's see how that looks. Um, I just have an empty code pen here. Um, I've already set the background um, correctly. And then I just have an empty div element. So I'm going to come under and paste um, what was generated in Photoshop. And you can see it's gone through and converted those layer styles to CSS. Now if I change this um, to target uh, div elements, here we can see the result. And the results are pretty good. Um, you can see that there's some areas like this um, bottom shadow. Um, obviously, the opacity isn't correct. Um, we also didn't get the highlight um, inner shadow across the top. But again, this can be a very, very um, nice way to quickly get CSS styles. But I want a more manual approach where I can actually build it from scratch. And that's what we're going to use Edge Animate for. So Edge Animate is actually free. Um, if you sign up for the free Creative Cloud account, uh, you can download Edge Animate for free. And in the blog post, there's a link to some tutorial files. Um, I'm just going to create a new uh, document here. And in the tutorial files, I just have this start.png, which is essentially just um, that uh, the three button states that I showed you a moment ago in Photoshop. So now I'm only going to be using the design uh, features or tools here. So I'm actually just going to get rid of all of these panels and even get rid of the timeline. So what I want to do is to set up my main stage. So I'm going to change to 100%. And now I want to set the background color. Now one of the things, if you're not using the new Edge Animate CC version, which again comes out in a couple of weeks, you're not going to have this color sampler. Um, so you're going to have to just, um, you know, uh, follow along and, and see which colors I enter here. Um, so now I've essentially uh, changed my background to be the correct color. So now I want to start creating or recreating these button states. So let me zoom in here. And we can see across the top we have uh, some primitives. These are all just divs with different border radiuses set on them. So I'm just going to get the rounded rectangle tool and just very approximately draw out uh, the correct size. Now you can see this is way off uh, from where it should be. Um, one of the things is the uh, border radius. So you'll notice with this selected, we have all of these properties that we can set. And all of these are CSS properties. For instance, if I hover over this, we can actually see the tooltip is telling me the exact CSS that's being set. And the stage over here is actually an embedded version of WebKit. So this is not like simulated. Um, what you're seeing is exactly how it will look um, in WebKit. So what I'm going to do is come to Corners. And I'm going to change it to be 3, to have a corner radius of 3. And we can see there should be a border. So I'm going to come under Color and select a solid border. And we'll worry about the colors um, in a second. Now I want to focus on the actual colors. So for this, obviously, I'm going to be using a gradient. Um, 
with a few different color stops. So I'm going to come in the color section, click on the gradient um, panel here. And now I want to start setting these. So I'm going to click on the bottom color stop. And I'm going to get the um, sampler tool. And I'm going to go right to where it goes from really dark. Um, I just want to get that bottom color like that. And now for the top color stop, I want to get that highlight color um, that you see on the top there. So right after the border, if we come down, we can see it gets really light right there. Um, and again, these are just starting point values. So now you can see this actual highlight is really only about maybe two pixels um, uh, high. So I'm going to add another color stop in here. And for this one, I'm going to get the color right after that highlight. So right there. And now you can kind of see here um, what we're doing. Now I can bring this color stop down. And you can see it's using percentages. Um, so I can get approximately the right um, size. And I can come back here and actually adjust the brightness of that highlight. Um, and again, we just want to get things approximate at this point. Um, so maybe I can bring this down to maybe 8%, like that. OK, so now if I zoom back out, you can see we have a pretty good start um, to our button. At any time, I can hit Command Enter. And this is actually going to go out and show me, actually, um, in Chrome, what this is actually looking like. So things are looking pretty good. Um, but there's still some changes, obviously, that I need to make. So I'm going to zoom back in here. Um, one of the changes is this border is too dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and sample um, from the image and maybe just make it just a little bit darker. And now I want to set this bottom shadow. So for that, um, again, in CSS, we're going to be using a box shadow, which I can turn on right here. Now, currently, you can only set one box shadow um, in the tool, um, but obviously, you can set multiple um, in CSS. And for this, I just want it to be 0x, one pixel on the Y, no blur with a spread of 1. And we can see what that looks like. Now, this looks a little funky zoomed in really close. Um, but I want it to lower the alpha of this um, quite a bit. And let's actually change to um, HSLA. And I want it to be somewhere around there, like that. So let's actually go out to 100%, look at it, and test what that looks like in the browser. So we can see that looks pretty good. Um, maybe this is a little bit too much right here, but. I, again, I'm just showing you um, the basics. So now, let's say we want to kind of uh, mess with this. Well, there's actually one more gradient that we have to do. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. We can see here that there's actually another color stop. So I can come in here, add another color stop, say about here, and just darken it a little bit like that. And again, let's go back out. So now let's say we want to actually mess with this at runtime. So I'm going to open the Chrome developer tools here. Now this CSS that's generated in these div elements, they're not meant for, um, you know, they're all inline styles. Because remember, this is an animation tool, not a design tool. But I can come into the main div, and we can see we have two elements. First is, uh, is that image, and the second is the actual um, div for my button. So now, if I increase the height of this, let's say I change it to, we can see the problem that's happening with that top highlight is it's percentage based. So here's where we can come in and actually tweak it and make it so that the background image here, the second stop actually can be a pixel value, not a percentage value. So I can change it from 8% to let's say, three pixels. And now you can see there's a nice hard line there at the top. Now I can also come in here. And again, um, I can adjust uh, the brightness of, of these different values. But again, just changing from a percentage to a pixel-based um, uh, color stop has essentially solved that problem. 
Okay, so now what I want to do is to essentially, um, I want to now do the other states of the button. So now one of the things you're wondering is, okay, look at all this code. How am I going to deal with this? Well, again, these are all inline styles. So if I just double click here, I can copy all of these and I can actually just uh, delete that style block altogether. And I can just remove the ID as well and change this to be a class of button. And then right here in the developer tools, add a new um, style and I'm going to call it dot button and then just paste those values in and now I have a an actual CSS class that I've created from those values and they're actually stored in this style sheet which is kind of the temporary style sheet for the developer tools so I now have this button CSS class um, that I can use and I can come in here and you know start removing some of the values that I don't need um, perhaps um, and cleaning things up um, but again we're not going to worry too much about that um, here you can see we're setting all the individual um, radii uh, individually so I can just clean that up a little bit uh, like this and again continue to work on this now let's do um, the other states so if I come back to animate all I'm going to do is to copy and paste this and come down now we're just going to adjust this gradient. So let me come here. And now we're going to leave, again, this top piece the way it is. We're going to get this second stop. And let me just quickly sample. Um, let's just get rid of this stop. We can drag off to the right. And let me sample down here. So this is basically just giving us a brighter color. And now let's. Uh, do the bottom one which is the active state so for this one we want to change that um, box shadow to be an inset box shadow like that and we actually want to increase the opacity on that and give it some blur um, because uh, inside of here we actually do want to apply some blur to it like that and we can change it here from being a gradient on this particular um, state, we can actually just make it a solid color. So I can sample that color. And I can keep working like that. Again, I'm not going to continue uh, right here. But now if I export that again, here, are, here is essentially the other state. Now I can open the developer tools here and look at this um, second button. And this contains the essentially what are the changes between uh, the first and the second button well all I really need to get is the um, the box shadow the background image um, basically the colors um, where I change them I can come back here and actually um, using the tools I can set the hover state for this button add a new class which is button hover, paste in just those changes, and now you can see um, we actually have a working, a working hover state for this button. And lastly, we can come and just grab the changes from the um, down or active state. Again, just want to get the stuff that we changed, which are the shadows. Um, so let's just grab this. And we can come back here and we're going to create an active state. So let's go ahead and do that. Paste in those changes. And now we should have a working button. So here we have a hover state. Then we have a pressed or a down state. Um, and we have it nicely working. Now if we go back to this inspector style sheet, we can see that all of those um, classes have been saved here. So now this stuff is ready to go. Now obviously you're going to want to prefix it and make sure everything is is working um, correctly. Um, but now we can come in and paste in this code and we can just set this to have a class of button. 
And when we do that, here's our button, and we have everything working the way that it should. So again, that's kind of, uh, you know, there are some manual steps here. You have to be familiar with the developer tools. Um, but again, being able to um, set all of these properties visually here in Edge Animate, I found to be a really great workflow um, when you're wanting to do visual CSS design. And lastly, I just wanted to show you the finished um, uh, thing that I have actually up on CodePen, and I have a link to that um, from the uh, blog post. But here's the finished thing with just some larger button sizes. Um, but you can see this was pretty easy to put together visually uh, using Edge Animate.